Okay, welcome back. Looks like we had a little camera issue there and we got cut off halfway through explaining the campaign game that we were going to play and the various reasons why that was the case. And uh, I might just uh, flick back to that real quickly and wrap up that thought there. Uh, so let's do that. This, this 1998 campaign also provides us with some opportunities to use optional rules. There's these uh, hovercraft, which I'm um, you know, in two minds about. Obviously, we get cruise missiles, which is nice. Uh, nuclear weapons are removed from the game because it's assumed that technology will have uh, got to the point where laser-guided munitions or uh, instrumentation will of, will uh, remove the value of nuclear weapons as they will all be destroyed en route. Uh, not sure I'm going to buy into that. I think we'll probably keep nukes in this uh, campaign. We'll keep the cruise missiles. We'll keep the hovercraft. We'll skip the space marines. And uh, we'll keep all of these basic, basic special rules here in terms of uh, additional uh, stacking, no reduced strength units for the US units. Uh, we'll skip the samurai. There's a samurai rule and all the sort of business for the Japanese. Uh, I'm not sure that's interesting enough to warrant dealing with. Uh, some of the Situa some of the situation has changed a little bit with uh, who owns what at the beginning of the game. So Korea has uh, been subsumed by the Chinese. Uh, no units can enter Afghanistan. And uh, so there's a couple other bits and pieces. You take out the headquarter units and you take out uh, some of the supply rules that change that, that, that it's much easier to stay in supply. So I guess that's all assuming that there's a better level of uh, logistical management by all forces concerned. So I think this scenario will be more playable as a virtual three-player game. I'm, I'm, I'll do it, play it that way, uh, versus the, the uh, what they call the contemporary campaign. Okay, So that's what we're going to do. And I thought we might have a quick look at the unit types and things like that. So when you're looking at the map, you're not uh, entirely 100% confused. <clears throat> There is this concept of uh, combat units having attack, defense, and movement strength, so all very basic. Uh, each unit has some level of personnel value, which I think is, uh, and I haven't looked at the CRT in detail, but uh, let's see. Nope. Uh, so uh, it looks like it's just a standard. What are we, what are we exchanging when we exchange? I'm just looking here real quick. Yeah, it's A1, D1, exchanges, eliminations, and the D1s are retreats. D1, D2, D3s are retreats. And I'm looking for exchanges. Are there exchanges? Yes, and how do they work? I've read this, but uh, yeah. That's what the personnel points are for. So when we do an exchange, we, 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 we're exchanging the, the equivalent personnel values, not uh, combat values, combat factors. So units uh, start out with a untried side, and when they get into combat, they're flipped into uh, their tried side and stay that way until they're eliminated and they go back in the pool and they can come be, be drawn out again. Here's this idea of the uh, wartime readiness versus peacetime readiness, and you would need to be mobilized. There's a bunch of different types of units, as you can see here. So you've got your armor mechanized, motorized infantry, uh, marines and paratroopers and airborne and air mobile and stuff like that. Then uh, cruise missiles, uh, air units with the ground and air to air combat range, combat effects, excuse me, and uh, uh, ranges. So uh, that's all pretty standard stuff. Now, I think on the back side, we're, we're doing this is the 1998 version, so we'll be using these. It looks like the ranges are extended. Uh, they now everything becomes pretty much a fighter bomber basically uh, so that's interesting there zones of control movement it's all pretty standard stuff uh, SBI standard the typical turn goes from a there's a strategic 
uh, movement phase, a land movement phase, interception phase, combat phase, reaction, mechanized move phase, and replacements, reinforcements, etc. And you're going to do that for uh, both all three players: Chinese player, U.S. player, Soviet player. Then the game turn indicator. No game turn track in here. That's one of the oversights of the game. Uh, it needed a 26 turn turn track. Uh, lots of room to put it on the map too, by the way. So I'm disappointed that's not there, but that's uh, par for the course. Uh, you can. I'm just going to write it up over on the uh, edge of the map there on the plex. So standard kinds of things. Uh, you can move into and out. Oh, let me just show you. Uh, I think I've summarized the rules here. This might be easier to see. <clears throat> Yeah, there's, yeah you, you have to pay a penalty to move into and uh, let me see here. Oh, that's just bonus movement, so it's nothing to do with zones control. Supply, we just we have to get back to a rail a rail line, I think it is. So it's all pretty standard stuff. Strategic movement. You, uh, the Soviets uh, are going to have the ability to do that. And there's sea transport. Uh, stacking is three units or four if we're doing the modern, the modern version of the game. Zones of control, that's right. Zones of control is just a plus one to exit, so that's a standard uh, SBI uh, mechanic. Combat is your standard uh, deal as well. So you tally up your factors, get a ratio, decide whether you're uh, applying fighter units to it or not. And um, you can do the multi multi hex uh, multi unit combats in a typical typical fashion. Terrain has its impact. There's retreats. Nuclear combat is a hex by hex basis. There's a special CRT for nuclear combat, and uh, the attacker attacks with the nukes. You roll the dice, and uh, uh, there's no negative benefit to the attacker, and the defender will receive whatever result it is. And then that then goes, uh, that will then potentially move you along the Armageddon track, which I don't know where that is on the charts anywhere. Let's see if we can see it. Nope. So, uh, I don't know where that is, but we'll try and find it. Uh, maybe you accumulate a number of uh, points. Uh, let's see. I don't see it anywhere. Oh, we'll have a look at the maps in detail later on. I've just read the rules and, and we're just getting ready to get set up. But I thought I'd walk you guys through some of this because it's, it's either marginally interesting or very interesting. Naval units, airborne units, all pretty stock standard stuff now what is this so we just did that combat stuff so that's i've flipped the page incorrectly have i page eight oh, no. and then we're and so that's nine and ten so that's it we're we're done here it is here's the last page of rules uh page ten page nine and ten uh, these are all special rules for these uh, space marines mountain units ma marine units the hovercraft for the 1998 a samurai I just mentioned earlier on, how to do replacements and reinforcements. Camouflage just means you can't go dig it into stacks depending on the terrain type they're in. And there's some national restrictions uh, and some weather stuff. So really very straightforward. I know I kind of was a believer with a lot of that, but when you read the rules, if I, you would have downloaded a copy of the, this 10 page uh, set of rules, you would go, ha, got it, own it, and now I'm ready to play. So hopefully the trick in the game will be the the gameplay that makes it fascinating and exciting so let's uh i'm gonna just pause the uh or stop the video there and then we'll uh, we'll get dug into getting this little sucker set up and we'll talk to you guys soon hope now uh so the point of this too by the way is that when i do do this uh gameplay live hopefully you will have had a little look at this uh video and I won't need to spend lots of time commentating on how the game works. And we can just focus on the gameplay itself. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye.